January 24, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Genesis chapters 42 and 43 from the Old Testament. When Jacob heard there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why are you looking at each other? He then said, Look, I hear that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy grain for us so that we may live and not die. So ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, What if some accident happens to him? So Israel's sons came to buy grain among the other travelers, for the famine was severe in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was the ruler of the country, the one who sold grain to all the people of the country. Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the ground. When Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but he pretended to be a stranger to them and spoke to them harshly. He asked, Where do you come from? They answered, From the land of Canaan to buy grain for food. Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams he had dreamed about them. And he said to them, You are spies. You have come to see if our land is vulnerable. But they exclaimed, No, my lord, your servants have come to buy grain for food. We are all the sons of one man. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. No, he insisted, but you have come to see if our land is vulnerable. They replied, Your servants are from a family of twelve brothers. We are the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. The youngest is with our father at this time, and one is no longer alive. But Joseph told them, It is just as I said to you, you are spies. You will be tested in this way as surely as Pharaoh lives. You will not depart from this place unless your youngest brother comes here. One of you must go get your brother while the rest of you remain in prison. In this way, your words may be tested to see if you are telling the truth. If not, then as surely as Pharaoh lives, you are spies. He imprisoned them all for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to them, Do as I say, and you will live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, leave one of your brothers confined here in prison, while the rest of you go and take grain back to your hungry families. But you must bring your youngest brother to me. Then your words will be verified, and you will not die. They did as he said. They said to one another, Surely we're being punished because of our brother, because we saw how distressed he was when he cried to us for mercy, but we refused to listen. That is why this distress has come on us. Reuben said to them, Didn't I say to you, Don't sin against the boy, but you wouldn't listen. So now we must pay for shedding his blood. Now they did not know that Joseph could understand them, for he was speaking through an interpreter. He turned away from them and wept. When he turned around and spoke to them again, he had Simeon taken from them and tied up before their eyes. Then Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain, to return each man's money to his sack, and to give them provisions for the journey. His orders were carried out. So they loaded their grain on their donkeys and left. When one of them opened his sack to get feed for his donkey at their resting place, he saw his money in the mouth of his sack. He said to his brothers, My money was returned. Here it is in my sack. They were dismayed. They turned trembling one to another and said, What in the world has God done to us? They returned to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan and told him all the things that had happened to them, saying, the man, the lord of the land, spoke harshly to us and treated us as if we were spying on the land. But we said to him, We are honest men. We are not spies. We are from a family of twelve brothers. We are the sons of one father. One is no longer alive, and the youngest is with our father at this time in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the lord of the land, said to us, This is how I will find out if you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers with me and take grain for your hungry households and go. 
but bring your youngest brother back to me so I will know that you are honest men and not spies. Then I will give your brother back to you and you may move about freely in the land. When they were emptying their sacks, there was each man's bag of money in his sack. When they and their father saw the bags of money, they were afraid. Their father Jacob said to them, You are making me childless. Joseph is gone. Simeon is gone. And now you want to take Benjamin? Everything is against me. Then Reuben said to his father, You may put my two sons to death if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my care and I will bring him back to you. But Jacob replied, My son will not go down there with you, for his brother is dead and he alone is left. If an accident happens to him on the journey you have to make, then you will bring down my gray hair and sorrow to the grave. Now the famine was severe in the land. When they finished eating the grain they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Return, buy us a little more food. But Judah said to him, The man solemnly warned us, You will not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you send our brother with us, we'll go down and buy food for you. But if you will not send him, we won't go down there, because the man said to us, You will not see my face unless your brother is with you. Israel said, Why did you bring this trouble on me by telling the man you had one more brother? They replied, The man questioned us thoroughly about ourselves and our family, saying, Is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? So we answered him in this way. How could we possibly know that he would say, Bring your brother down? Then Judah said to his father Israel, Send the boy with me, and we will go immediately. Then we will live and not die, we and you and our little ones. I myself pledge security for him. You may hold me liable. If I do not bring him back to you and place him before you, I will bear the blame before you all my life. But if we had not delayed, we could have traveled there and back twice by now. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the best products of the land in your bags and take a gift down to the man. A little balm, a little honey, spices and myrrh, pistachios and almonds. Take double the money with you. You must take back the money that was returned in the mouths of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take your brother too and go right away to the man. May the sovereign God grant you mercy before the man so that he may release your other brother and Benjamin. As for me, if I lose my children, I lose them. So the men took these gifts and they took double the money with them along with Benjamin. Then they hurried down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the servant who was over his household, Bring the men to the house, slaughter an animal and prepare it for the men will eat with me at noon. The man did just as Joseph said. He brought the men into Joseph's house. But the men were afraid when they were brought to Joseph's house. They said, we are being brought in because of the money that was returned in our sacks last time. He wants to capture us, make us slaves, and take our donkeys. So they approached the man who was in charge of Joseph's household and spoke to him at the entrance to the house. They said, my Lord, we did indeed come down the first time to buy food. But when we came to the place where we spent the night, we opened our sacks and each of us found his money, the full amount in the mouth of his sack. So we have returned it. We have brought additional money with us to buy food. We do not know who put the money in our sacks. Everything is fine, the man in charge of Joseph's household told them. Don't be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. Then he brought Simeon out to them. The servant in charge brought the men into Joseph's house. He gave them water and they washed their feet. Then he gave food to their donkeys. They got their gifts ready for Joseph's arrival at noon, for they had heard that they were to have a meal there. When Joseph came home, they presented him with the gifts they had brought inside, and they bowed down to the ground before him. He asked them how they were doing, then he said, Is your aging father well? 
the one you spoke about, is he still alive? Your servant, our father, is well, they replied. He is still alive. They bowed down in humility. When Joseph looked up and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, he said, Is this your youngest brother, whom you told me about? Then he said, May God be gracious to you, my son. Joseph hurried out, for he was overcome by affection for his brother and was at the point of tears. So he went to his room and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out. With composure, he said, set out the food. They set out a place for him, a separate place for his brothers, and another for the Egyptians who were eating with him. The Egyptians were not able to eat with Hebrews, for the Egyptians think it is disgusting to do so. They sat before him arranged by order of birth, beginning with the firstborn and ending with the youngest. The men looked at each other in astonishment. He gave them portions of the food set before him, but the portion for Benjamin was five times greater than the portions for any of the others. They drank with Joseph until they all became drunk. God, I get so excited reading your word. Every time I read these stories again, something new comes together in my heart. Um, I always think of, of the Bible as your word, and then when we read it and use it and, and apply it to our life, then it becomes the living word. And there was something that really struck out at my heart today when I was reading this passage. When his brothers are standing before him and Joseph is releasing them, and he says in uh, chapter 18, sorry, chapter 42, verse 18, he says, Do as I say, and you will live, for I fear God. Now, this is really interesting that this is in here because it probably, if they had been paying attention and maybe not so afraid for their life, this should have sounded a little bit odd to them, right? So here was the person second in charge below Pharaoh of all of Egypt. He was married to Azanath, who's the daughter of, of a priest of one of the Egyptian gods. He is under command of Pharaoh, who worships many Egyptian gods. And that's not what he said to them. He says, do as I say and you will live, for I fear God. But I don't think any of them heard it. Again, I don't know if it's out of fear or just the fact that they were men severely lacking in faith and values at that time. But it's so interesting, God, how in the next chapter 43, the man in charge of Joseph's household said something similar to them. Don't be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasures in your sacks. And I'm not really sure why that has struck out at my heart as so interesting, except obviously you're, you reign supreme over this entire situation. But I think, I think about it more from the brothers who weren't men of God. And we've seen that over and over and over again in their actions. And when Joseph tried to speak to them about you, God, I don't think they heard him. I don't think there was a connection there at all. There wasn't a, even a pause. That that's really odd that this person who we think is an Egyptian <laughs> is talking about our God. And I think about the people in our lives who we talk to about God. They're not in, most of them aren't in the frame of mind that we are. They are people who either don't believe in God or don't believe in anything bigger than themselves. Maybe they're spiritual, but not Christian. They're just in a, a different 
place than we are in when we speak words of God's love and God's forgiveness and and God's grace. I wonder, God, if if they're very similar to Joseph's brothers that at least in the moment they can't hear us. But that that's not for us to decide. That's for you to decide. You know, in John 15, 16, you say, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And we've got to keep that in mind that we are simply here to be good stewards of your word, to share with other people your amazing love and forgiveness. But it's not our responsibility for the people to hear you and to follow you. That is between you and that person. Um, our responsibility is just to do what you've told us to do. So I think it's kind of interesting that Joseph said that to them. And it, and they were so caught up in all the other stuff they were doing. So caught up in their guilt. So caught up in um, the fact that they had just been in prison. And it's such an amazing comparison to Joseph kind of being in the same situation 17 years ago. And instead of reacting in a way that was all caught up in himself, instead he listened to you, God. He glorified you. He did what you asked him to do. And yet you, there's even this reassurance that these this group of brothers who... <laughs> Uh, Reuben just cracks me up in this. Yeah, you can kill off my two sons if if I don't bring back your son. Really, Reuben? Really? Um, even as they come back and they're reassured once again by a man who's in charge of Joseph's household, don't be afraid. Your God, the God of your father, has given you treasure. Now, they're referring to the payment that's been returned to them, but but how awesome is that and what a reassuring thing it is to tell other people. Don't be afraid. Your God, even if you haven't accepted him as your God yet, your God has treasure for you. Your God has forgiveness for you. Your God has love for you. And even though you're not hearing me right now, I love you. I forgive you. So God, help us remember that. Help us remember as, as we're talking to other people about you. Or even just living our lives as a reflection of you. That just because somebody doesn't get it when we talk to them. Or sometimes they're even offended sometimes by what we say or don't say. That is you who works in their life. It's not us. Our words and our actions are to glorify you. And we're doing, hopefully, we're doing what we've been told to do. But let us remember that it is you who is in charge of these people who are afraid, who may not know you as God yet, who are living their life moment by moment from afraid of, of famine and starvation to being thrown in jail to losing their brother. I'm so caught up in these day-to-day -day issues. And maybe it's, maybe God, this is more about us actually saying those words to people who don't know you as God. Reassuring them to not be afraid. That your God, who you don't know yet, but your God, boy, does he have treasure for you. It doesn't mean you're going to have an easy life. Look at Joseph. It just means you're going to have an incredibly amazing life lived out for God. So thank you, God. I've got some thinking to do about, about these statements and these brothers and, 
and what was going on, but gosh, I just thank you for your, for your consistency, for putting your word into our heart and allowing it to grow and allowing us to apply it to our lives, allowing us to uh, see a path in front of us with these words. It just gets so exciting. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for all of this. In your son's name we pray. Amen.